Hi everyone, it's been a few weeks, but finally I am back in the land of YouTube to bring you another video. Today we're going to delve back into the world of consoles, handheld consoles to be exact. The Atari Lynx. Rawr. The Atari Lynx was a high-end 16-bit handheld game console released worldwide over the course of 1989 and 1990. Sporting the world's first LCD colour screen, the graphics were considered to be very advanced for the time period on the small screen. This bad boy was marketed to take on the Game Boy, which reigned supreme at the time, so it was filled with all the bells and whistles to try and put the platform ahead of the competition. At one point in time, this was the most powerful handheld gaming device in the world, and it would not be until six years later, with the release of the Genesis Nomad, that something more powerful would come along. Now, before we look further into what the Lynx is, we're going to look at its conception. The Atari Lynx was originally developed by a company called Epix under a different name, The Handy Game. Not really quite as edgy a name, really. <laughs> I'm quite happy they changed that in the end, actually. But anyway, Epix were enjoying many successes throughout the 1980s within game development, including titles such as Impossible Mission and Summer Games, as well as creating hardware such as the fast load cartridge for the Commodore. So, rewinding back a bit more, in 1986, two former Amiga designers known as RJ Mickel and Dave Needle were approached by a former colleague from Amiga called David Morse. Morse was now working for a new company called Epix and was looking for THE Dream Team, who would be able to develop a top-of-the-range portable handheld system for them. Allegedly, this was because Morse's son had personally made a request that he make a portable gaming system which had triggered Morse to take the lunch with Mickle and Needle to discuss the possibility. I wish my dad would take me seriously like that. Uh, Dad, uh, can I borrow some money please? Can I have some money please? So I can buy an Osmo and a drone? Well anyway, this lunch had been a very good and delicious one, which had resulted in Mickle and Needle becoming formally hired by Epix to design the Handy game for them. By 1989, the Handy was officially presented at the Consumer Electronics Show. However, it wasn't all good news. Epix were under the cosh financially and needed partnership to help prevent their ship from sinking. So, who were the obvious choices? Well, Nintendo were approached, but their Game Boy was being released soon in April of 1989, and they were not interested. Likewise, Sega 2 declined, as they were in the beginning stages of development for the Marmite system, the Sega Game Gear, which I have already made a video about. So, that leaves one more big hitter or the culprits behind the North American video game crash. Yeah, Atari, you dirty dogs, you. Okay, so basically, Epix didn't really have much choice in the matter. It was join forces with Atari or go into administration. You're going to choose not to die, aren't you? Atari agreed that provided Epix worked on the software development, they would handle the production and the marketing. Trust that sneaky Jack Jamel, rest his soul, to sweep in like a vulture smelling out the dying animal in its last death rows. And by the end of 1989, Epix was dead and the Lynx was now essentially an Atari IP. Ironically, however, to be able to finish the Lynx, it did mean that Atari had to purchase a load of Amigas from Commodore, their arch nemesis, to be able to develop the software. As I said, the Lynx was pitted against the Game Boy, 
which had seen a release during April 1989 and would see further competition in the form of the Game Gear and the PC Engine GT, which were both released over the course of 1990. So the Lynx itself would remain available on the market until its discontinuation in 1996, which was actually the same year that Jack Trammell sold Atari following his son's heart attack the previous year in 1995. The Lynx was the second official handheld console released by Atari, but was worlds apart from its predecessor, known as the touch me Jesus Christ there's definitely got to be some kind of joke in there that I am not willing to explore <laughs> however this was not actually a cartridge based handheld Atari did however experiment with cartridge based handhelds prior to the release of the Lynx including the full development of the Atari Cosmos which was manufactured and even commercially boxed though it would never officially see the light of day. The Lynx was initially marketed under the name Portable Color Entertainment System and priced at $179.95. But once the consoles were shipped out to the shops, the name was formally changed back to Lynx. I wonder whether it's because it sounds too much like Nintendo Entertainment System? Moving on, the Lynx had quite a successful start, as Atari had reported they'd managed to sell 90% of the 50,000 units which were distributed for the launch month in America. This then increased to 500,000 for 1990, then up to 800,000 by the end of 1991. However, despite its good start, it was never going to be able to make the same amount of sales that the Nintendo Game Boy made. The Game Boy was just half the price and had a much stronger set of IPs. Speaking of library, here is a snapshot of a few games for the Lynx as recommended by my Twitter followers. The first game is Chips Challenge, which is a top-down puzzle game published by Epix to be a launch title for the Lynx. It's basically about a nerd called Chip who fancies a girl called Melinda the Mental Marvel and has to go through an ordeal of 148 puzzles to win her affections and get to join her club, the Bit Buster Club. I would literally love to know what a combination of incels and Anita Sarkeesian would think of this game. <laughs> Warbirds is a first person flight simulation game which was developed this time by Atari for the Lynx. You get to be what you always wanted to be, a World War I pilot. There are five scenarios where you get to fly against between one and three enemies with increasing difficulty per stage. You're able to look out of windows on the plane and are able to toggle between different settings such as unlimited ammunition and damage capacity. California Games is another game made by Epix which was initially made for the Apple II and the Commodore 64 amongst others. This game was obviously ported to their own device and was a pack-in game with the device. Games including surfing, roller skating, BMX and flying disc, California Games is perfect for people like us who like the idea of sport but don't actually like breaking a sweat. Todd's Adventures in Slime World, <laughs> which is not a euphemism at all, is a side-scrolling platformer which stars Todd, an explorer who decides to invade a weird country called Slime World to look for gems with nothing but a water pistol for protection. Man is a nutter. The game has many different play styles and variations for each of the levels, which can make the game sometimes feel a little bit like a puzzle game too. Xenophobe is a game about people who are scared of foreigners. <laughs> Not really. It's a game about alien invasions and you have to kill the aliens. 
It's a port of the arcade game of the same name. The main premise of the game is you have to kill all of the aliens before the timer runs out. Apparently, the Lynx version is more difficult than the other versions as additional buttons were incorporated. In 1991, after sales had really started to dwindle, Atari decided to release the Lynx 2. It wasn't much different. It had a more sleek and sexy design, marginally improved hardware, and the screen was clearer, amongst other additional changes. However, it wouldn't be enough to make any more of a meaningful impact on the market. Despite continued support from companies like Toys R Us continuing to sell it up until about 1995, however it was actually 1995 that Atari would finally decide to shift their focus onto the Jaguar instead. Ultimately, as powerful and impressive as the Atari Lynx was, the platform permanently trailed behind the success of the Nintendo Game Boy. This was down to several reasons, the most notable of which being that the Atari Lynx had no killer apps that could match the addictiveness and multi-age appeal of the likes of Tetris and no hugely popular franchises like Super Mario Bros to shove into people's faces. Sadly, there was not one game on the entire platform that had that level of appeal. Further to this, other factors hindered the product, such as the expensive price point of procuring one of these bad boys and the poor battery life, which resulted from the system's high level of power. All in all, the Atari Lynx was an extremely impressive piece of kit for the time period and should be remembered today as a somewhat technical marvel with regards to what it could do. But sadly, the Atari Lynx will go down as not much more than a footnote in gaming history due to the outrageous success of its monochrome competition. So that was my take on the Atari Lynx. Now I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk to you directly. I'm really sorry that I haven't been here for the past few weeks. I've had a lot of stuff going on in, basically in real life. So. Now that all of that is all sorted, I'm really hoping to get back into the swing of things and start releasing weekly content once again. So, same as usual, if you like this video, hit like, give me a comment, let me know what you think, but most importantly of all, hit that lovely big subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.